on the campus of the University of South Carolina, two unbeaten and top 10 teams, Maryland and South Carolina, about to tip off. Pam Ward along with Carolyn Peck. And Carolyn, this is a big matchup in November. And I don't think it's too early to think about building that resume. The committee will look at this game when it comes up in March. And Maryland head coach Brenda Fries just moments ago had this to say in the locker room. Poise negates noise. And understand, we've been through this, that if a play doesn't work for us, that's all right, because we've got the next play. The next play is going to be the next great play that we can make for each other as a team. This game is simple. We understand that this is Maryland basketball. This is Maryland basketball tonight. You go out, you defend, you rebound, and you run them out of the gym. You make a statement. Here we go. They are trying to make a statement on the road. Uh, Brenda Fries, one of three coaches in the building that have won national championships. You won one at Purdue. Don Staley, a couple of years at South Carolina. So two very successful coaches matching up. And with Maryland, Brenda Fries is going to do what she always has done. She's going to go get points in the paint and have strong rebounding. But you have for South Carolina, Don Staley, no Asia Wilson. We're going to have Four guards, four out, one in. It's a new style for South Carolina. This is going to be a fun one. And they both uh, took national championships. Maryland first in 2006. A very underclassman heavy team that won it all in Boston. And just a couple of years ago with the aforementioned Asia Wilson in her junior season, South Carolina had an emphatic win against Mississippi State to bring home their first national title. So no Asia Wilson. This is a team that is relying on guards, particularly Tennessee transfer Taya Cooper. Taya Cooper, before this season, hadn't played in about two and a half years because of the transfer in the ACL. So she's excited to play, get back on the court, and especially this one against a ranked team. We're going to have to get to see a special freshman for Maryland, Shakira Austin. Brenda Freeze always has that dynamic post player inside, and Austin is it for the Maryland Terps this year. Shakira Austin at 6'5", just 18 years of age. She will come off the bench, and she is indeed averaging a double-double. South Carolina, for the fourth straight year, led the country in attendance. And they are well on their way to making it five in a row. Another great crowd on hand. They are fired up for these two unbeaten teams to face off. Akia Herbert Harrigan getting ready to jump against Kyla Charles. And we are underway. And Cooper right away gives it to Ty Harris, who's a really good point guard, but has had trouble with turnovers so far this year. She's got to take care of the ball, but she won't have to run strictly the post anymore. Great high, low inside. Alexis Jennings getting established early. Jennings has been playing on a bad knee, still not in top condition. As she is making her first start of the season. And right away, South Carolina forces a turnover. Cooper, nice look into Harris. And this is a great start for South Carolina. They beat Clemson the other day, almost blew a 21-point lead in a turnover festival for both teams. Well, we talked about South Carolina going with this guard, more athletic perimeter, really defense. And this is what, has, what South Carolina wants to do is able to run in transition, not so much have to set up in the half court. Maryland also is a team that likes to push pace. Blair Watson, who started today for the Terrapins, coming back from an ACL, hit on the other end. Charles gets beaten by Herbert Harrigan. This Herbert Harrigan can be inconsistent. She's got to score more. Kiki Herbert Harrigan to go along with Taya Cooper. And then South Carolina needs to get scoring from Ty Harris as well. Jones. Second turnover for Maryland as she dribbled it off her foot. South Carolina aggressive early. Cooper, beautiful look. Into Jennings. Already a couple of assists for Taya Cooper and an early timeout for Maryland. A terrific response for South Carolina early against the Terps. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge Black Friday savings. And Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need.
You are watching the SEC on ESPN, and so far so good for South Carolina blazing out to an 8-2 lead. Don Staley won to score points, especially off their defense. And with getting deflections and looking down the court, Taya Cooper looking ahead, finds Ty Harris. And then in the half court, just the penetration. Maryland defense, they rotate. Instead of selling for jumpers, South Carolina is continuing to hunt points in the paint. Don Staley's team forced 28 turnovers in the win against Clemson and hitting four out of their first five shots. Coach Staley told us at shoot around this morning that she took responsibility for really not preparing her team, especially against Clemson's zone, which gave them trouble on Thursday night. And Maryland is a team that didn't want to have to settle for jumpers either. Charles with the miss. Charles, their returning leading scorer, average over 18 points per game last year. These two teams played last year. South Carolina won in College Park. And that has been wide open down on the right block. Four assists on five field goals now for South Carolina. Frazier had it taken away by Jennings. Three turnovers for the Terps. Taya Cooper fast as lightning. I got to believe Brenda Freeze has got to go to her freshman, Shakira Austin, to have some size inside for Maryland. Frazier decides to challenge Jennings, who got a hand on it in the game against Clemson. South Carolina blocked 16 shots, which ties a program record. Harris with the miss, rebound taken down by Maryland, who year after year is among the nation's best at rebounding. Good fake by Frazier to draw the foul. And we have a good officiating crew tonight. Dee Kantner joined by Tyna Napier and Cameron Inouye. Here comes Shakira Austin. This 6'4 freshman already on the season, averaging a double-double. And where Maryland feels her presence the most is on the defensive side of the ball. In fact, Shakira says that that is the better part of her game right now. Blair Watson got it stuck. South Carolina going to hang on to the ball, excuse me, with the possession arrow. South Carolina's defense so far looking good. Well, the rotation, and I think that was a point of emphasis uh, after the Clemson game, that Don Staley really wanted to start the game with the intensity on the defensive side. Not so much worried about making shots because they didn't shoot it very well against Clemson. So you've got to establish yourself defensively. South Carolina only shot 36% from the floor on Thursday. Still were able to survive and win. But boy, their hands are all over the place. Lee Lee Grissett, number 24, into the game, affecting the play right away. Doesn't South Carolina look more locked in than they yeah. did to start the game against Clemson? Yes, I would imagine that uh, practice on Friday probably was a little <laughs> bit intense you after think? what happened on Thursday night. Coach Staley, after the game came over, and the first thing she said to us is, I want to apologize to the basketball gods for that game everybody had to watch. Maryland having trouble hanging on to the ball. Blair Watson has it dribble off, and I believe that will be a foul on Maryland, and indeed it is. Brianna Frazier whistled for her first personal foul. As Brenda Fries tries to get the correct pieces on the floor, Brenda Fries in her 17th year at Maryland 12 years ago won the championship. And they have dominated the Big Ten, in fact, won both the regular and the tournament championships every year until last year when Ohio State got it. And they've done it, Pam, with strong post play inside. And normally they have a, a bigger uh, margin when it comes to rebounding. But so far it's been South Carolina that's been all over the glass. Harris got a wide open look, left it short. Rebound to Taylor Mike Sell. Chancy pass, but somehow it was caught by Charles, who put it in a great athletic play by the junior from Glendale, Maryland. Grew up about 15 minutes away from the campus in College Park. Cooper. She is tough to 
stop when she puts her head down and drives to the basket. Lead back up to 10. Austin, the freshman, turns it over. That is four giveaways now for the Terps. Kyla Charles, deceptive post player, only 6'1", but gets out in transition. Terrific finish with the left. Charles numbers down a bit from last year, but she is fine with that because there are more offensive weapons for the Terps. Somebody got to stop number two. You think? Work on that. Marilyn Watson with the answer. Blair Watson went out with an ACL injury in early January last year, and that really hurt the Terps. Well, because of the intensity she brings on the defensive end, and then this is another score that Maryland had to play the second half of the season without. Good job on the class by Krizet. And a tie-up. The ball will stay with South Carolina. South Carolina is off to the races, though. As soon as they get possession of the basketball, they're looking to score quick. They're not waiting to have to set up in the half court. And look, Taya Cooper is like, I'm going to go until you stop me. If you don't stop me one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to keep going into that paint and get those layups. South Carolina now plus 10 in point paints and plus 10 overall as Ty Harris makes the call. Brazette. Boy, they're taking it right into the teeth of the Maryland defense and getting good results. Mike Sell, who was a terrific shooter with a lot of confidence, and another one and done. Just off the bounce. One on one, off the dribble. This time it's a post player. Lily Grissett just takes it to the left with the finish. Five different Gamecocks have scored so far. Number five, Victoria Saxton with the ball. Boy, she played really well against Clemson the other night. Freshman they're very excited about. Watson, that's the first South Carolina turnover. Mike Sell, who isn't used to shooting from that close. She's a leading scorer so far for Maryland, averaging about 15 and a half points per game. The Terps coming in 3-0 on the season. But both of these teams are facing ranked opponents for the first time this year. Rosette working on Jones. Lewis, the Terrapin point guard, gets it over to Watson, who has it rim out. Good job on the glass for Stephanie Jones. Older sister Brianna now playing in the WNBA after a great career at Maryland. Kanye Kleine coming off the bench, or uh, starting, excuse me, today. Gave it up. Cooper. Nothing doing. And ahead of the pack, Maryland getting back in it. The finish for Watson, who has half a dozen. Well, that's Taya Cooper shoots the three. She's at the top of the key. She's got to be getting back in safety. Otherwise, it's going to be a layup. And Maryland's going to take full advantage of it. 6 nothing. Maryland run forces a South Carolina timeout. Turks down 10 early. But they can also get back in the game in a hurry as we take a timeout. Welcome back. Coming up Tuesday at 7 Eastern time on ESPN. Top 25 will be revealed. It's the college football top 25 rankings presented by Capital One, also available on the ESPN app. And Maryland out of the South Carolina timeout. There's another turnover. That's a three-second violation. So things have turned for Brenda Fries's club. And they knew coming in, this is a very loud building, and we talked to some of the... Terrapins, and they said, we've played in Lyle Billman's before, but especially the freshmen, they haven't played in this. Well, but they know the returners, when, they, when these two teams met last year, it was a sellout in Maryland. Stephanie Jones knocking down the jumper. 
So they're not a, they're not unfamiliar with playing in front of a crowd, and they seem to have settled in so far in this first quarter. South Carolina was able to win that game. Asia Wilson had a career high 32 points, and Asia Wilson is in the building today. So oh, is Kayla Davis. Yeah. A couple of those who helped Carolina get the national championship two years ago. Mike Sell, I know you're impressed with that shooter. She can knock it down. It's like a layup from the three-point line for her, but this is a player that works at it. Normally, before every game, she makes 500 shots and 250 of those are from the three-point line. And that's game day, everybody. That's <laughs> not, I mean, you would think that might tucker her out, but it doesn't. That's a foul. And it's a charge. Maryland has scored the last 11 points. Second foul on Herbert Harrigan. And now Maryland can take the lead on this possession. But watch Mike Sell, and she reminds me, and she said other people have said that as well. The way she hunts buckets, it's like a player from the state of Ohio, Katie Smith. She could score a little bit. Woo! Maryland seven for their last eight from the floor. Make it eight of nine, and the three gives Maryland the lead. You know, Brenda Freeze in the locker room said, if one play doesn't work, we got another one for him. And that's the confidence her team has. Shanice Lewis, who had been just one of six from three in this young season, knocked it down. And what a turn of events for the Terps. Cooper, can she get another one? No, she cannot. Rebound Watson. Lewis with the spin, just hit the three. Maybe not the best shot selection there, and a foul called on Shakira Austin. 6'5 freshman from Fredericksburg, Virginia, who turned 18 back in July. Yeah, she said she's the youngest on the team. And she's gonna have to go now, go now to the bench with two fouls. Kyla Charles back in the game. Inside a minute now. And that's a freshman mistake by Mike Sell. Pick up her first. She is from Massillon, Ohio. So it was, she was recruited by Ohio State, but felt Maryland was just the right fit for her. She's got that scores mentality. Brenda Free said she had to talk to her about every time you touch the ball, it's not your shot. <laughs> <laughs> but the way she shoots it, all right, let it go. Maryland red hot hitting eight of their last ten. Meanwhile, South Carolina hasn't scored in four minutes. Sarah Bujacic, number 32, checking in from the Terps. Kleine. Nope. South Carolina's drought continues. Saxton can't hit. Jennings can't end the drought. And the shot clock is off for Maryland. Two on one. Mike Sell gave it up very unselfishly to Charles. 16-0 run. Cooper took a big Euro step. That wasn't a problem. She got fouled. Mike Sell picking up her second. So that could be an issue for the Terrapins. They have 10 players. More depth at the post, though, than in the backcourt. But she has 10 solid players that can play. So if, you know, she's got a couple of players that get into foul trouble, she's got a bench. Really, anybody can come in and fill a role. They're, they've got depth at just about every position. Now, Taya Cooper finally ends a drought for the Gamecocks. They went four minutes and 40 seconds without scoring a single point after they raced out to a 10-point lead. And I'll tell you what changed. Maryland got more discipline in sharing the basketball, executing their offense. South Carolina got stagnant. Austin, excuse me, Lewis, that was a tough shot off glass. Just one-tenth of a second left. And a Maryland team that trailed 18 to eight. Just time for a tap. They don't get it. That is no basket. But what a way to end the first quarter for the Terps. They were down 10, now they're up three. They went off on a run. Shanice Lewis knocking down the three, running in transition. The Terps said, hey, South Carolina, we ain't done. Oh, yeah.
But with college basketball serving up Feast Week on November 15th, this, 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 I'm like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, my. Tune in to the Maui Invitational starting Monday, November 19th. Oh, Hawaii. They're going to see some uh, very good basketball, including the number one team in the country is Duke. We'll be on uh, in the quarterfinals Monday. All those ball clubs coming up with the Maui Invitational in beautiful Lahaina. And in the ESPN app, you can see all those games. We are here in South Carolina. Pam Ward along with Carolyn Peck. South Carolina actually led this game by as many as 12 points. And there's some good players, Zion Williamson especially for Duke, huh? He is a beast. And people talk about him as if he's the next LeBron James. I mean, I, listen, if I was him and a, was an opponent, I would not take a charge. He goes to the basket like a monster. And you will get to see him play in Maui. Maryland trailed this game by 12, actually, in the first quarter, and then finished off with a huge run. Nice by Shanice Lewis, a sophomore from Miami, with the assist. Maryland's, Austin's back in, excuse me. Maryland's going back with Shakira Austin. She's got to play with two fouls right now. The only have her is one. I think she's got two. Just one officially against Austin. That foul that we just saw was definitely against Stephanie Jones. And the rebounding, very important. Both head coaches said rebounding would be key in this game. And that's something that Maryland has annually been known for year after year is out rebounding their opponents. In fact, very often they are in the top two or three in the nation. And I asked Brenda Fries, how do you get such strong rebounding teams? She said, well, I like big guards. So you assume your post players are going to rebound, but she's got guards that rebound as well. And they don't do a lot of rebounding drills. Austin called for the ball and then got it blocked in her face. Good hustle by Jones to keep it Maryland's way. And then she's rewarded. That's a couple of nice looks from Lewis. Lewis's experience last year as a freshman she really learned in the fire, and one thing that Brenda Free said, she can trust her. She knows she's going to get the ball in the right place, in the right hands of the right person. The run now is 20 to 1 in favor of Maryland after they were down by a dozen. Shot clock, very skinny now, five seconds. Cooper, wide left. Terrific effort to keep it going by Nellie Perry, the graduate transfer from Clemson. We've seen South Carolina's offense kind of go stagnant. We saw it against Clemson just the other night. That was a stuff by Jones to force the held ball, but the possession arrow keeps it with Carolina. And I think one of the reasons that the offense can go stagnant is because it's a new system. You know, when you're used to having sets, you know where your bailout's going to be. But now when you're running more positionless basketball, you've got to read each other, and that's going to take some time to get comfortable with each other. Too high for Jennings. Lewis with the ball in her hands. To travel against Austin. Lewis became the point guard. Maryland had a very promising point guard in Destiny Slocum, who was the national freshman of the year, but she transferred to Oregon State, which put Lewis as a freshman in charge last year. And they also thought they were going to have uh, Kristen Aki that ended up going and staying playing for her Greek national team. So that fo forced a lot of minutes for Shanice Lewis. And Kristen Aki did have one year of eligibility left, but decided to play pro ball. So she is not with Maryland at all this season. South Carolina continuing to be cold from the outside. Watson off the back rim. Rebound again by Charles. And the second time that Maryland has had it stuck, but the second time the possession arrow has been in their favor, so they hang on to it. But the rebounding by Maryland, that's what's keep, keeping them in control of this ball game right now. You know, and shoot around and watch in South Carolina, Don Staley constantly, and Fred Schimmel said, box out, box out, box out. But listen, that's a full-time job when you're doing that against Maryland. Maryland now plus three in rebounding.
Lewis found a little bit of daylight and took it. Denise Lewis off to a terrific start. She's got a great assist to turnover ratio so far this season. Jennings working against a double. And Austin comes up with the rebound. Charles makes it a 24 to one run. South wow. Carolina just cannot get anything out of their offense. And the adjustment that Maryland has made when the ball goes inside, don't help. You can defend someone, your person, one-on-one. -on -one. Don't help. Saxton, nope. The field goal drought continues. South Carolina has missed 16 of their last 18 shots. They're 16 of their last 19, even worse. Single digit shot clock, Watson calmly takes the shot. Austin with the rebound and the putback. Kara Austin, who admits that her offensive game has a way to go. Able to score. Jennings hits the field goal. They had gone nine minutes without a field goal. And the fans at Colonial Life trying to get them back into the game emotionally. Lewis has it rim out. Good one-armed rebound by Charles. Austin there for the follow. Terrapins never give up on the glass. Plus eight in second chance points for Maryland. That's the thing. When you play defense and you force your opponents to miss that first shot, you got to make it one and done, especially against Maryland. Cooper, nice dish over to Jennings. That's a hold. Perry had a hand on Charles. See, that's what Cooper did so well in the first quarter, is being able to slice the defense, cause help to rotate over, then drop it to the post inside. South Carolina with a timeout, trails Maryland by 11. We are back in South Carolina. A big day for Kyla Charles, the junior from Maryland. Six points, so she's exactly at 1,000 in her career. Well, she's not done either, but she did it with a hard hat on. Hard work, running the floor in transition. She battles. This is a 6-1 player that plays inside, but she plays much bigger than she is. And I talk, talk about efficiency. Man, that kid can finish. Charles with 600 points last year. The only other two sophomores to have 600 points is a sophomore, Crystal Langhorn and Alyssa Thomas. So that's some, that's elite company. Well, yeah, with a lot of alum from Maryland. But yeah. the other thing that, keep your eye on, Kyla Charles, she's only four rebounds away from reaching 500. She'll do that in this game at the rate she's going. So Maryland got down early. And they have responded very well to take the lead. Both teams unbeat, both in the top 10. 28 to 5 now is your run. Charles, that's a tough look into Austin, but it's off of South Carolina. 11 seconds to shoot. We talked to Kyla earlier, and she was a guard in high school, went to Riverdale Baptist in Maryland, but played a lot of the four for the Terrapins the last her first two years, excuse me. Off the inbound, that's a foul. Jones was hacked. But she said she's getting more comfortable with the versatility of playing on the perimeter. But you can tell when she gets to go to work down low in the paint, that's where she can make things happen. And Charles comes from a terrific athletic family. Her mom, Ruperta, ran on the Antigua Olympic team in 1984. She was a sprinter and is in the Howard Hall of Fame, both for her individual work and for her relay team 
where her relay teams work in track. What well, goes in, it works in the jeans because the way we <laughs> see her get out and sprint the floor transition. Charles last year, 31 points and 10 rebounds in the loss to South Carolina in College Park. Off to another good start this evening. Good look, wide open, and Herbert Harrigan. That's only the second three she's taken all season. Charles, a little bit long, and then fouled on the rebound. It's her first. Makia Herbert Harrigan has the range. One of the things that Don Staley has told her, listen, don't try to be Asia Wilson. You be you because you've got great vers versatility. She can score inside, but it is not yeah, a freak of nature that she knocked down the three. She's got that shot in her repertoire. That is the first three-pointer of her career. But she could shoot it in practice. She just hadn't had the opportunity in games. And with this new system that South Carolina's playing, you're gonna see her take more threes. Fans here wanted to walk on Charles, but instead she stuck with it and got another basket. Sort of a frantic pace. Do we hear two in a row? Nope, just off the, heat just off the iron. That's a heat check yeah. right there. She said, I got me one. I'm going for another one. Jackson knocks it out. 26 seconds to shoot for the Terps. Kyla Charles going to work. So she might miss her first shot. It ain't over. She stays after it. Great energy on the glass. Six rebounds for Charles. Maryland up a dozen. What 24 point swing in this game. Lewis has not turned the ball over yet for the Terps. Look at that. She has shown some offensive aggression tonight. The Just player only averaging three and a half points per game. Maryland getting so inside the South Carolina defense. When you look for South Carolina, they've just kept the ball around the perimeter. Yep. They stopped attacking like they did in the first quarter. Destiny Henderson checked in and took a, a shot. Freshman from Fort Myers, Florida. Maryland now plus 11 in the rebounding department. And another pair of paint points for Jones. I'm gonna tell you, Maryland has taken control of this game, second chance opportunities, and scored in the paint. What a turnaround. Herbert Harrigan with the drive and a foul on the perimeter. Maryland really shredding the South Carolina defense right now. Making it look easy with their ability to really get by the South Carolina players and go straight down the lane for an easy layup. Lily Gossette late to rotate over to cause the kick out. Gives up the easy layup. So Maryland plus 10 in second chance points, also plus 10 in points in the paint tonight. Tay Cooper's been quiet for a while. And she is someone who needs to score. Austin gets the Jennings miss as we hit two minutes to go in the first half. Jones could not handle the pass from Charles. Sixth turnover for Maryland. You just wonder uh, when South Carolina either would look to extend their defense, put some full court pressure in, or go zone. See if Maryland can shoot the ball, because right now they're getting inside in the paint anytime they want. And in case you're wondering, Bianca Cuevas Moore is not available for South Carolina. There was hope that maybe she would be able to play. She's been cleared to play, but Dawn Staley does not want her swift guard to come back from that knee surgery against a team like Maryland that likes to turn games into a track meet. And Bianca, you know she's chomping at the bit to get in there. She has been for a long time. Dawn Staley said she was begging her to play, especially in this game, but because of the tempo, you know, that's not the type of game you want to test that knee out. Bianca Jackson called for the charge. Cuevas Moore, a key component of the national championship team a couple of years ago, but did not play at all last year. Tore up her left knee. 
and in the spring of this year announced she was transferring to West Virginia and then announced she changed her mind about a month later. Ty Harris trying to get something done. She's got Cooper to her left. One of the few good looks and she can't finish. Watson, three. And another timeout. A minute and one tick left to go in what has been an incredible first half. This time the Maryland run is nine nothing. Well, and it has everything to do with rebounding. 13 to three on the glass. And then transition, Blair Watson, welcome back for the Maryland Terps. In transition, she can get it done defensively, but she's also a scorer as well. And Shanice Lewis, number three, the right to the uh, right of your screen, just to the right of Brenda Freeze. How about eight assists and no turnovers for the Terrapin point guard? And Brenda Freeze talked about how she is so efficient with the basketball. She doesn't need to take a lot of chances. She sees the floor, and she really gets each player the basketball in a position of their strengths. Second in the nation and for freshman assists last year, and this is balance right here. I'm telling you, Maryland, from one end of the bench to the other, they've got solid players. All 10 players can score the basketball, and the offense that they're running, it really plays to each player's strength. So Dee Kantner and Tyna Napier now have gone to the monitor. We're hearing that there could have been a superfluous or a push by a Maryland player. Well, Shakira Austin and Bianca Jackson got a little tangled up in the backcourt as South Carolina was coming down the floor. The Dawn Staley's team got all the way to the Elite Eight last year where they lost to the University of Connecticut. They've been to six Sweet 16s in the last seven years, won a national championship two years ago, and we believe this is what they're looking at. On the left side of your screen, that's Austin. Austin and Jackson, I didn't see anything terrible there. It was yeah, it wasn't anything extra. I think both players were just going after the basketball. Nothing excessive. Yeah, and Jackson landed on Austin a little bit hard, but that was, again, just going after the ball, as you mentioned. But now a chance, you see Ty Lewis talking, Taya Cooper told us she wanted to be more vocal in this game, and you saw Cooper talking in that huddle, and nothing was found. Tyna Napier came over and explained, look for a little extra, she said curricular activity, but nothing was found, so they'll resume play. Good job by this officiating crew. South Carolina trying to get something positive before they go into the locker room. And Maryland has switched up to a zone. Kleine with the miss. Cooper kept it, kept it alive. South Carolina taking the air out of the ball a little bit. Now Cooper with 11 seconds to shoot. Working on Charles. Nice hesitation. That's a tough shot. Rebound to Austin and Maryland on, with a three on one. But Lewis very wisely, knowing there's time left on the clock, holds up. Cross court. Watson spots up. Air balls it. But the University of Maryland, who trailed by 12 points in the first quarter, ending with an incredible run to lead by 19, 45-26 against South Carolina as they head into the dressing room. Both teams coming in unbeaten on the year, both in the top 10, but Maryland so far getting the better of South Carolina. Here's Carolyn now with 
Maryland coach Brenda Freeze. Coach Freeze, in this second quarter, you really opened things up. What did you see you were able to take advantage of? Uh, we finally settled in. <laughs> First uh, quarter, uh, we had to get adjusted to it. I, we finally started getting stops on defense, and I thought we settled down on the offensive end, kind of taking what the defense was going to give us. Your freshman point or a sophomore point guard, Shanice Lewis, eight assists, zero turnovers. What do you like what you see? You know, I, I got on her pretty hard to start the game, and I thought she responded like a winner does, and uh, she makes us go. And I uh, took it to heart. She's been sensational. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. And that was a 31-point swing by Maryland to take control of this game. As they head into the locker room, balance scoring for the Terps. They're up 45-26. to 26. The Dodge halftime report is coming up. Shanae is standing by with Hall of Famer Rebecca Lobo. You are watching ESPN's Feast Week presented by Lowe's. Second half about to get underway in Columbia where South Carolina trails Maryland by 19. The number nine and number 10 team in the country respectively in a game that started out all South Carolina. Pam Ward along with Carolyn Peck won a national championship at 99 with Purdue. So in this game, South Carolina got off to a 12-point lead. The Maryland came storming back. While Brenda Freeze made the adjustment, she told her Maryland team to attack the paint. And that's exactly what they did. Shanice Lewis just going off the dribble. What a fantastic sophomore point guard. His second chance opportunities on the glass. If they didn't get it in transition, if they missed their first shot, you know what? There was a second opportunity. But how about this? Your sophomore point guard has eight assists, zero turnovers. Her court vision, her timing, her delivery has been fantastic. And that is Shanice Lewis has eight assists. South Carolina has a team only has eight. Rebounding so important. Maryland plus 12 so far, plus 10 in paint points, plus 10 in second chance points. South Carolina getting some offensive rebounds themselves, but they did not take advantage. Well, it's a great point because South Carolina has eight offensive rebounds, but they've only converted that to four points, where Maryland has nine offensive rebounds, and they've turned that into 14 points. Stephanie Jones, the only player on either team in double-figure scoring with 10. Kyla Charles going over 1,000 career points earlier in this game for the Terps. And right away, a turnover to start things off. And really unforced. You know, there was no reason why Ter Ty Harris couldn't have got a better angle to make that bounce pass into Jennings. Second straight year, these two teams have met. Maryland lost at home last year. Lewis, what a game. They usually don't rely on her to score. In fact, her career high is 12 points. She's got 10 tonight. And South Carolina started off red hot and then missed 21 of 25 shots. They only scored seven points in the second quarter. Well, they went on that scoring drought in the third quarter against Clemson on Thursday. So they know that part of their offense. And a lot of that, I believe, is due to you've got a new system. So when you run sets, you know exactly who's going to be where and the coach can call your number. When you're running positionless and kind of uh, motion offense, you've got to get used to and read each other. The worst thing you can do is stand. Jennings hits one out of two after Charles picked up her second foul. Jennings gets subbed out. Now some full court pressure by South Carolina. Try to get back into this ball game. And it worked. Lewis had her pocket picked by Cooper. And that energizes the crowd. Charles has two fouls and took a step. So the pressure forces two turnovers quickly. I thought it was a matter of time. Don Staley kept that full court pressure until the second half. But with the trap, quick hands of Taya Cooper for the easy two. South Carolina 10 of its 29 points coming off of turnovers. Kleine right at Jones. And just like they started this game, South Carolina comes out playing well to start this quarter. Charles could not save it. That's three straight turnovers for Maryland.
Well, the referee is not calling a timeout. Well, and that pressure and the turnovers is exactly what will get this crowd back into the ball game. And certainly could get South Carolina back into it. Off the back iron for Harris. Rebound battled for, but it is off of Grisette. Well, Blair Watson getting the start today, coming back from a knee injury that cost her half of last season. Throws it into Mike Sell, who is a freshman. 20 seconds left on the shot clock, and another almost turnover. Boy, that was just a fortunate bounce right into Jones's hands. It's better to be lucky than good. South Carolina answers on the other end. It's Klein who has a couple of quick buckets. Harris almost forces another turnover. South Carolina has scored seven points already in two minutes. They only had seven points in the entire second quarter. Mike Sell, who is a terrific shooter, has had trouble getting open looks. Got one there. Just a little bit strong. Hunted down her own rebound and then tried to get too fancy with the bounce pass to Charles. Brenda Freeze keeps telling her team, settle down, settle down. But South Carolina has forced them to play a little quicker than they're used to. Maryland's turned the ball over on four of their last five possessions. All in this quarter. 22 seconds to shoot. Harris with the inbounds. Herbert Harrigan dribbled out of trouble. Watson, that's a tough check on Cooper. Got a hand on it. Good defense, 14 seconds to shoot. And now here comes Maryland star. And Shakira Austin, the 6'5 freshman, comes in for Watson. She was effective when she came in off the bench with six points and eight rebounds in the first half. And I thought that early on she had two fouls, but evidently was only one. Help. Herbert Harrigan had her first career three earlier in this game. That was a long two. And another giveaway. Lewis, head up, Grisette, get it in. And now a timeout taken by Brenda Freeze. One of the loudest crowds in the country on their feet, a nine to two run for South Carolina. They got number nine versus number 10. Number 10 is the home team playing from behind, but they're getting themselves back into it. Hey, stay tuned. We got a good one right here in Columbia. You are watching the SEC on ESPN. Pam Ward and Carolyn Peck joining you from South Carolina. And look who is in the building. No surprise that Asia Wilson is dancing along with the South Carolina mascot. And to her left, Kayla Davis, two key components of the national championship team a couple of years ago. And people should be happier now because this pressure put on by South Carolina has put them on a nice run. Well, it's totally frustrated Brenda Freeze in that timeout. Her team had a great shoot around for the whole first half, had played pretty well. But when you start out in the first part of the third quarter and you have five turnovers, when you only had six in the complete first half, five turnovers, that will frustrate a coach. It has been this pressure that South Carolina continues to lay on. Maryland led by 22 early in this quarter, and they just cannot handle this press. Lewis has three turnovers in this quarter. She had none in the first half to go along with eight assists. And there's another giveaway. All the fans on their feet wanting Harris to shoot there. She did not. Cooper couldn't get it. Grisette couldn't handle. So a 22 point lead now down to 13. Well, the full court pressure just 
the anticipation of the South Carolina players bringing the help, the rotation, taking away the pass, and then quick score. And now Lewis is out of the game and speaking with Brenda Freeze on the sidelines. Austin can't get it to go, and a foul on the follow against South Carolina. It's on Lily Grissett, her second. On Staley trying to figure some things out. This team's so different from last year. I just wonder if we put the jinx on Shanice Lewis. We talked about her eight assists, zero turnovers in the first half, and then with this pressure, I turnover you. after turnover. One thing that Shakira Austin needs to improve is her free throw shooting. Gets there about five and a half times per game, which is tops for this team, but only hits 59%. 0 for 2, but Charles gets the rebound, and Austin can't get it. Couple of good chances for Maryland on the follows. Austin now with 10 rebounds. The freshman for Maryland had 21 in their first game of the year against Coppin State. Grisette working hard on the glass and it pays off. Eight nothing run. Mike Sell, a true freshman. Remember, Austin is out of their game, or excuse me, Lewis, their point guard, and Maryland finally silences the crowd. Jones with the bucket. Stephanie's got 14 to lead everybody. And then a whistle on the other end. That is the third foul on Taylor Mike Sell, who is the best outside shooter and the leading scorer for Maryland on the season. Averaging over 15 points per game, only has five so far tonight. Here's Ty Harris. Brenda Freeze talks about how much she trusts Stephanie Jones, knowing that she's going to make the right play. The Maryland team was struggling to score, and so this young post player understood her ability to isolate and take it off the bounce. And Coach Freeze says that Jones is finally stepping into her own now. As a junior, Harris delivers at the free throw line. 12-point advantage halfway through the third quarter. A test for a Maryland team. Watson, big shot for the junior from Nutley, New Jersey. She goes into double figures. Ninth assist for Lewis, but her first of this quarter. Herbert Harrigan, space, hit it. Charles fouled on the way to the basket to the chagrin of another great crowd in Columbia. South Carolina at one point down 22, turned on the defensive Jets to get back in it. Blair Watson with the big three for Maryland. Herbert Harrigan responding in what's become a good game. Pat Mahomes is going to light this league on fire. Touchdown, LA! They can score on just about anybody. The Rams are making a prime time statement. Showtime. What a matchup in Monday Night Football. You can see a preview of that big Monday night game between Chiefs and Rams on SportsCenter tonight at 11 Eastern on ESPN. Don Butcher Gross and the always hilarious Kenny Mayne. They'll also have post-game reaction for the Vikings and Bears fighting for first place in their division. And lots more on the NBA. Catch at 11 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. So South Carolina coming out of the locker room has been good tonight. Well, the biggest difference in this second half is that they have gone and attacked the paint. They're plus eight starting off in this third quarter. 
where they've really closed off, that put a, built a fence around the paint almost against Maryland. And the 16 points in this third quarter, half of them coming off of Maryland turnovers. Don Staley and her staff deciding to come out with pressure, full court pressure, and that has paid off. Well, Maryland only had six turnovers in the first half. They have seven already in this third quarter. Charles hits them both for Maryland. She now is into double figures. First team all Big Ten performer last year for the Terrapins. Maryland, by the way, picked to win the Big Ten this year. South Carolina picked to finish second behind Mississippi State in the SEC. Herbert Harrigan draws the foul. That is three on Stephanie Jones. And, well, Ter Taya Cooper has been doing the majority of the score for South Carolina. So to see Herbert Harrigan become more aggressive offensively, now if South Carolina could get one more person to step up, and that probably needs to be Ty Harris. Harris so far with just three points. Herbert Harrigan, she shines brightly. Both of her SEC tournament performances, both as a freshman and a sophomore, she was really good. And the, it's been the inconsistency that kind of drove Dawn Staley crazy the first couple of years. Well, in both of those instances, there were games where they, South Carolina wasn't sure if Asia Wilson was going to be available to play. So Herbert Harrigan knew she was going to be counted on. Now, there definitely no yeah. Asia Wilson, she's so she's got to step up. And in one of those years, remember, Elena Coates missed the SEC tournament. So that was another big that she had to pick up the slack for. And now some foul trouble for Maryland. Kyla Charles has just picked up her third. Mike Sell and Stephanie Jones also have three fouls for Brenda Fries's club. They do have 10 players, a deep team, but that's some talent that has three fouls on them now. Herbert Harrigan, so much confidence now from the outside. You see Kyla Charles get up for that rebound now, wow. And Charles is only 6'1", but a terrific athlete. She's got eight rebounds, working on another double-double. Frazier left alone, but she's not gonna shoot from there. That's why she was left alone. Keep an eye on Charles, moving without the basketball. Nice roll by Frazier. Grisette came over to bother the shot. Maryland staying on the boards, but they cannot take advantage. And the freshman Austin pounds the floor because she could not put in a, a follow shot. Well, you watch Kyla Charles pass to Frazier, unable to finish. But look how relentless Maryland stays on the glass and all the players are standing straight up. Nobody gets themselves in a position putting their backside on somebody boxing out. Your entire backside or just the mid portion of your backside? Whatever side <laughs> of that backside you need Whatever to, push, works. to push somebody back so you can get the rebound. That was the second foul on Austin. So South Carolina in the bonus for the rest of this quarter. And now Mike Sell comes in, the freshman from Ohio who scored in double figures in every game this year, only five so far tonight, and she's in with three personals. When Brenda Freeze had to talk to her in their last game against GW about every shot's not your shot, but I think as a freshman, you got her second guessing it now. That's a three-point shooter and with a shooter's mentality, but she catches it. she got to look for it, look for that shot, catch it shot ready. Austin with her 12th rebound, converted that into her eighth point. And we had a chance to talk with Mike Sell. She's a very confident freshman. Austin with another rebound. Over 13 rebounds for Austin. Six have come off the offensive glass. And she's someone who really, when you watched her on tape, you were impressed with Austin, correct? Oh, oh yeah. It's just her versatility and her agility, her ability to move at her size. Frazier missed badly and not a player who takes a lot of jumpers for Maryland. Kleine had it blocked away by Watson. Well, Watson is a player who isn't going to jump out at you in, on film necessarily like Austin will, but does a lot of things well. Well, she's smart. Both sides of the ball. In her first game back, she plays the, played against Dayton. She created eight points on her own, and two of those were off steals defensively. 
lost and fortunate that she didn't take an extra step. Maryland hangs on with 10 seconds to shoot. Herbert Harrigan goes out in favor of the freshman Saxton. And Brianna Jones in for Brianna Frazier. Also known as Stephanie Jones. Brianna Jones now playing the WNBA. She's not here but tonight. They're related, so <laughs> oh, it was close. Yeah. Shot clock dwindling. Mike Sells got to put one up. Got a block. Good job by South Carolina to force the turnover. It's, it's a 15-point game. South Carolina keeps knocking at the door to try to get it in single digit digits, but it seems like every time they get close, usually it's Maryland either a drive into the basket or getting an offensive rebound, offensive putback. South Carolina coming out like gangbusters here in the third quarter thanks to their full court pressure, but still, I mean, it, it does feel like it should be closer the way they played in this third quarter, but it is a 15 point advantage. Shot clock into single digits. Well, in South Carolina, stop scoring. you got to score to set your defense. Wow, Saxton just came into the game. There's somebody else who can jump out of the gym. Now, Nad's a player for South Carolina that loves to rebound. That's a good matchup with Saxton and Austin inside. That's a third foul now on Austin. Mellon has four players with three personals. Saxton, a 6-1 freshman from Rome, Georgia. Six points, seven rebounds, and five blocks in the win against Clemson on Thursday. She's got great energy. You've got to love a post player that plays with tremendous energy. So Austin sits down with the five personals for Maryland. Charles slices in and Saxton got her with her body. That is the first on Victoria. And the shooting foul sends Charles back to the free throw line. Tyler Charles on the Naismith watch list for National Player of the Year, someone who has had a very steady but relatively quiet career at Maryland, but certainly one of the better players in the country. She told us she loved, she was really looking forward to playing here tonight at this crowd. She says, I love competition and crunch time. And Charles, what a night. She's gone over 1,000 career points and now 500 career rebounds in this game. She's just a junior. Like you said, she's a name that not many people know about, but they will before her career is over. Just a little bit too strong off the hands of Cooper, who has been really quiet after a quick start. And Taya Cooper, we talked about her in the open. She needs to score for this team to be successful this season. Good rebound by Grisette. And then Saxton came away with it. Just a millisecond or tenths of a second difference, excuse me, between the two clocks. South Carolina has now gone over four minutes without a field goal. Dawn Staley calls a play from the sideline. Shot clock at five. Jackson to Saxton, got to put it up. Just off the back of the rim for Ty Harris. So South Carolina put a dent in what had been a 22-point lead, but Maryland finishes the third quarter strongly. The Terps up 14 after three in Columbia. Welcome back to South Carolina. We've had some significant players coming back from injuries last year, and they've done a good job tonight. Well, Blair Watson has been able to already contribute 12 points, but we still haven't seen 
Bianca Cuevas Moore, and she might help from the perimeter for South Carolina. But T Taya Cooper has definitely stepped up. She's leading the Gamecocks with 11 points so far. But out of that, the 5 for 15 from the floor, Taya is 0 for 5 from 3. As a team, South Carolina has missed 15 of their 16 threes. And who's the only one to hit one? A post player. I love it. I love it. Herbert Harrigan is the only player to have hit a three for South Carolina. And it was her first of her career, and she's a junior. Charles starts things off with the bucket. Charles going over 1,000 career points and 500 career rebounds with efforts in this game for Maryland, trying to go to 4-0 on the season. Maryland goes to San Juan for Thanksgiving and South Carolina to Vancouver. Two different climates, that's for sure. A little bit. Cooper can't get that three. She's 0 for 6. Good rebound for Charles. But in Vancouver, Notre Dame and Oregon State are possible opponents for South Carolina. South Carolina's schedule is no joke, that's for sure. But keep an eye on Kyla Charles. Last year against South Carolina, she went off for 19 in the fourth quarter to finish with 32, excuse me, 31 points and 10 rebounds. That is the third on Lily Grisette. If you're just joining us, South Carolina got off to a 12-point lead in the first quarter, then Maryland finished the half on a 38-9 run. Terps have led by as many as 22. South Carolina chipped away with their full court pressure in the third quarter, but Brenda Fries' team seems to have righted themselves now. Well, the defense has picked up where the, the offense of South Carolina has become stagnant. In order to set your full court pressure, you've got to see the ball go through the hoop. You've got to score baskets in order to get your defense set. Charles delivers at the line. Second half shooting, neither team doing very well at 35%. Maryland with a little three-quarter, one-two-two pressure. Maryland gets the lead back up to 18. They led by 19 at the half. Shot clock into single digits. Herbert Harrigan takes it right to Charles and scores. Remember Charles playing with three fouls. But a lot of time ticked off the shot clock. Time is not the friend of South Carolina. They're going to have to get things going pretty quick. 28 seconds left on the shot clock after the make. As you just mentioned, South Carolina able to put on the pressure. And that resulted in points off turnovers in the early part of the third quarter. Stephanie Jones got underneath and then it was able to back up to find space to get the shot up and in. She's got 16, one off a career high. Maryland with wins over Coppin State, Dayton, and then the obliterated George Washington winning by 39 on Wednesday, giving up only 30 points. Kind of Napier with a, an emphatic call. That's Charles' fourth. Kyla Charles called for a fourth, and right away, Brenda Freeze gets Austin off the bench to sub in. Foul trouble could become an issue for Maryland. Jackson got a little bit of room. Bianca scores her first points of the day, coming in as the second leading scorer behind Cooper on the season, averaging 11 points per game. South Carolina's only played two games. Off the mark, nobody checked Watson, who wisely pulled it out. You're right, just a smart, heady player, Blair Watson. I think Lily Gassette's a little fatigued because when the ball went over her head in the press, she didn't get back to box out on the backside. Mike Sell, off the mark, rebound Austin. Maryland has 19 offensive rebounds, but Austin took a step. 16 second chance points for the Terps off 19 offensive rebounds. Maryland going to play Morgan State down in Puerto Rico and then Georgia. Georgia lost by 10 to Georgia Tech today. That's a big win for Michelle Joseph's team. Going to be interesting in the SEC this season. Mississippi State picked to win it 
but there's so many question marks. Of course, Mississippi State lost four starters off their finalist, national finalist team last year. But you still, in Mississippi State, has Tierra McCowan. They got Enriel Howard. That's a good finish by Shakira Austin. Freshman into double digits. And another double-double. She's averaging a double-double, 10 points, 14 boards. And still South Carolina struggling from distance. Herbert Harrigan at least able to sneak in for the follow. But what's been the problem for South Carolina? When teams have gone zone, their offense has become stagnant. We saw that when they played Clemson on Thursday. Two bodies hit the floor, Austin and Herbert Harrigan. Foul on Blair Watson for the Terps, her second. To just watch, Maryland has figured out where to attack that press. If they can get the ball down on the baseline, it gives an opportunity for that baseline drive. There's only one person there. She's got to make the decision to help or not. Herbert here again finds a little bit of space, but left it short. South Carolina going with a four guard lineup. Team that does not have a lot of depth in the post. Brissette getting a break on the bench that you mentioned because she is winded. Shanice Lewis smartly pulled it out. Watson has hit a couple of big threes. <laughs> Let me tell you, that was awesome because Brenda Freeze is telling Janice, Janice Lewis to come pull the ball back to the top because she wants to use the clock. But then once Blair Watson hit that three, big smile went across her face. She said, OK, I'll take that one. It's funny, isn't it, Coach, how it can go from a terrible shot to a good shot just like that? More contact. Foul on Bianca Jackson. Her second for Carolina. I wish we could see Brenda Freeze because she's going, get it out, top, up, yes, good shot. Look, you see Brenda Freeze, you can see her shoes. She's like, kick it back out. Blair Watson says, I got you, coach. I'm going to put us plus three, three more right there. Blair Watson, three of nine from three today. South Carolina as a team has only hit one. Stephanie Jones adding to another good day. And now Maryland has the ball. Five minutes to go. The Terrapins back in control. Yeah. For the freshman, Mike Sell. Known more for her three-point shooting. But that time delivering on the drive. Just like that, Maryland has its largest lead of the game. The block by Stephanie Jones. And then on the other end, the freshman delivers a chance for a three-point play when we come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge Black Friday savings. Welcome back to South Carolina, Maryland on another run, 7 nothing run to take a 75-52 lead. And you like basketball, you like Hawaii, we got the perfect antidote for you. It's the Maui Invitational coming up. Quarterfinal starting on Monday in Lahaina. Duke, Gonzaga, Auburn among the teams that will be playing semifinals coming up on Tuesday. You can check it out on ESPN and also the ESPN app for all your stuff. Taylor Mike Sell. Completes a three-point play. And she got her first points of the second half. The run now 8-0 for Maryland. South Carolina has gone through some scoring droughts in this game. Well, and when they go through those scoring droughts, they can't get their defense set. And especially, they usually their scoring droughts in this half has been when Maryland has gone zone. Let's take a look now at the AP Top 10. You see two of the teams right here, Maryland and South Carolina. Nobody has a blemish on their record in the top 10. That will change with this game today. Notre Dame pretty much picking up where they left off with the Goomba Wale and company. Like you talked about, South Carolina could face Notre Dame. They will face UConn. They will play Baylor. They could face Oregon State. 
where for Maryland, really only have four ranked teams on their schedule, South Carolina being one, Georgia, then you've got Minnesota and Iowa in the Big Ten. Maryland picked to finish first in the Big Ten. And South Carolina, as you mentioned, what a schedule. And Don Staley has done this for the last few years. And then they play in the SEC, which is tough enough. You know, this game is far from over, but if South Carolina were to drop this game, they still have time to climb back up and really regain some respect because they've got so many ranked teams in their non-conference as well as the ones that they're going to face once the SEC season starts. Blair Watson now with 17 points. That is a new season high for the junior. And Brenda Fries says that Maryland is just a different team with her on the floor. She's such a big influence. Another turnover. And now Shanice Lewis wisely decided to Throw it over to Mike Sell, who thought about shooting it, but instead it was Watson's turn to bury it. I wish you guys could see Brenda Freeze because she keeps telling her team to bring it up top, but Blair Watson finding herself wide open. Look, she's hot. Keep scoring. There's no need to try to take the air out of the ball. Destiny Henderson's basket ends a 13-0 Maryland run. Some pressure that Maryland was able to solve. And a travel gives the ball right back to South Carolina. Three subs coming in for the Gamecocks. Taya Cooper going out. Taya on the day has 11 points, but missed all six of her threes. South Carolina really has struggled from the perimeter. And you know, really what Maryland has done with their big guards, they've put a lot of, a lot of pressure on the outside and really been patient, waiting to see if South Carolina was going to get hot from beyond the arc. If they're not, sit in that zone. And they are not hot from beyond the arc. You might have seen that graphic. One of 20 from three as a team. Adasia Williams gets her first look at the second half. Number 23 for South Carolina as we hit three minutes to go. Williams fouled by Jones on the rebound. So South Carolina fans obviously used to success over the last several years. Four straight SEC championships, going to Final Fours, winning a national championship a couple years ago. Is it time to panic if you're a, a, a part of the, the G-Hive? You remember, it is not time to panic. Listen, you don't have to be great in November. It's a new system. And it's gonna, you're going to have to go through some growing pains. Again, you're not running sets. You're running motionless offense. These players have got it. When you're going against your practice guys in practice every day or each other, it's not like going against opponents, especially at this level. But that will come over time. Asia Wilson, by far the best player that uh, was well, their best player in the country last year. Lindsey Spann was the only other big contributor they lost, and Lindsey only played in 15 games before her season and career ended. So what a difference a player makes. You're talking about these two coaches being national championship coaches, and we had the conversation about, you think it's hard winning that first one? It's following up and winning the second one that's really hard because one, your personnel has changed and it takes you a long time to build to get to that one championship. It's also difficult to keep that mental focus for that long and build that back again. And yeah, that was the point that Don Staley made. It, it, it's tough enough when you have a you know a target on your back and everybody's gunning for you, but she said it's right. the mental part, mentally exhausting, to try to keep it up, get back. Playing in the SEC, playing this tough out of conference schedule, that is a foul on Jackson, her fourth. But better days are ahead for South Carolina and for Maryland because you are looking right now at the two teams that have the two top rated classes in the country coming in. Yeah, South Carolina number one, Maryland number two. And the signing period goes on uh, till the 21st and there's still two top recruits that have not announced yet. Haley Jones was supposed to announce 
I think it was today, but because of the fire, she's from California. She said there are more important things right now than her announcement of where she's going to college. And then there's also Aaliyah Boston out of Massachusetts, big post player, number three in the country. So it'll be interesting to see where those two young ladies go. Deja Williams with another basket. Aaliyah Boston, uh, if anybody had a chance to see the three-on-three -three world championships this year, she was part of that squad. And of course, all of our heart, you know, your hearts and your thoughts go out to those folks out in California. Oh, it's devastating. It's just uh, unthinkable what's happening out there. Saxton with the block, but both Maryland and South Carolina signing, especially for Brenda Fries. She wants to get more athletic on the perimeter. That will happen with her signees. South Carolina needing some size and depth. And they're getting a terrific player out of Canada, Leticia Emma here, who is sick, sickly good. Well, she's got two guards. She has Ashley. Awusu, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And Ashley. then Diamond Miller. Yep. So they're going to be so much more athletic uh, to bring some help to Shanice Lewis. So, look, this Maryland team, they only have one senior in Brianna Frazier. Yep. So you, a lot of these players you see right now, you're going to see next year as well. Deja Williams has done some damage off the bench, but it's going to be too little too late. South Carolina going to drop to 2-1 and one on the season. And they are getting on a plane tomorrow. Don Staley's squad going to head out to beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. They're going to take on East Tennessee State and maybe Notre Dame and Oregon State. Don going to put on the comfy shoes now that the game is almost over. Maryland going to play Morgan State. Two teams from the state of Maryland going to Puerto Rico to play. And then they play Georgia. We'll see how Georgia bounces back from the loss today to Georgia Tech. I'm going to tell you the one thing Don Staley is going to be upset about, you give up 83 points. Yep. You know, she's a defensive-minded coach. It's lucky for these players that they get on the plane tomorrow because <laughs> practice can be real interesting. So growing pains for this South Carolina team. We will see them much more often. And Charles gets another basket. Boy, she's had a wonderful day. But it's no time to panic. South Carolina doesn't need to panic. You're not going to be great in November when you're trying to adjust to not having an Asia Wilson and so you have a new system. That will come over time. You've got a great player in Taya Cooper. Now you have to have other scores that can score as consistently. But the main thing Don Saylor is going to point out is you've got to guard somebody. Yes, that is the one thing that she will never tolerate. Maryland scoring the 85 points. This is a Maryland team that has averaged over 81, but Coppin State, Dayton, and GW. Not in the same echelon, historically at least, as South Carolina. But the balance and the confidence that Maryland has at all five positions. Everybody yep. for the Maryland Terps, they have the green light to shoot it. They know where to shoot the ball from. They share the basketball. Their chemistry is fantastic, and they're having fun while they play. Because I know when we were preparing for this game, you watched a lot of tape on Maryland, and you said right off the bat, you're like, they're good. They are good, yeah. and I think that this is a team that could be contending in March because as they grow together as a unit, as Shakira Austin gets more experience to go along with Kyla Charles, Hey, they can shoot the ball, they can block shots, they can rebound the heck out of the ball. 21 Sarah Myers checking in for the Terrapins, her first action of the afternoon. So Maryland's going to win this game to go to 4-0 and on the season. Austin, another double-double, 10 points, 16 rebounds, a double-double for Charles, 17-10 and as Maryland wins it by the final of 85 to 61. So Maryland with an impressive win on the road as they head to Puerto Rico. South Carolina heading to Vancouver for Carolyn Peck and our entire crew. I'm Pam Ward saying so long from Columbia.